Hello, this is Nick Nielsen of Grand Strategy, The View from Oregon. Today, an interview in Starbucks. A few years ago, while running some errands in the evening, I stopped at a Starbucks in northeast Portland for hot chocolate. I wanted to take some notes before I forgot my ideas, so I sat down with pen and notebook, and as soon as I did, I regretted my choice of seat. At the next table were two young women who were talking loudly and animatedly. What is one to do? Listen to their conversation, of course. So that is what I did. The younger of the two was still in high school and was being interviewed for participation in some program by the older of the two. The younger woman was enthusiastic and full of youthful energy and optimism. She made her high school experience sound quite remarkable, and this made me reflect on my own experiences now more than 30 years old. I have a great many bad memories of school, but no good memories. I do not say that the school was bad, only that my experience of it was bad. No doubt others, who went to the same school at the same time as I did, might give a radically different account and a very different evaluation of the experience. But my experience was what it was, and I can neither deny it nor deny that it shaped me. Projecting my own experiences into the present, I cannot help but wonder if there are others, attending the same public high school that this young woman found to be filled with such inspiring opportunities, who find the experience as profoundly alien as I found the school experience. The conditions of human experience, as well as the temperamental variability of individuals, are constants of the human condition, at least within a single macro-historical division of civilizational time, and therefore human natures are iterated within these parameters. In other words, more or less the same kinds of individuals will appear to fulfill the social roles reserved for individuals of a given temperament. With these thoughts in mind, I found myself thinking of Dostoevsky's Notes from Underground, which Dostoevsky prefaced with this note, quote, The author of the diary and the diary itself are, of course, imaginary. Nevertheless, it is clear that such persons as the writer of these notes not only may, but positively must exist in our society, when we consider the circumstances in the midst of which our society is formed. I have tried to expose to the view of the public more distinctly than is commonly done one of the characters of the recent past. He is one of the representatives of a generation still living." Unquote. Dostoevsky might have elaborated on this, going beyond the explicit yet exclusive invocation of the past to include the future in his observation as well. He might have said, one of the representatives of a generation still living, or even of a generation yet to be born. As Dostoevsky notes, such individuals not only may exist, but must exist. Now, for a salto mortale, a death-defying leap, and I hope I don't lose the listener in making this leap, but bear with me please if you will, a leap which I will make from Dostoevsky and his underground man, to Edmund Husserl, the philosopher who single-handedly created the discipline of phenomenology. Husserl, during his last years, lived during the rise of Nazi power in Germany. As an assimilated Jew who had converted to Christianity, he was stripped of his right to teach, his right to lecture, even his right to attend philosophical congresses. Husserl was offered a position at a university in California, but he chose to stay and to die in Germany. Sometimes I try to imagine Husserl having joined the German expatriate intellectuals in California during the war. It makes for quite an image, Husserl among the palm trees, bathed in sunshine. But that image will forever remain an unrealized counterfactual conditional. Of his later years, Husserl wrote, quote, And we old people remain here, a singular turn of the times. It gives the philosopher, if it does not take his breath away, much to think of. But now... Cogito ergo sum, that is to say, I prove subspicie eterne my right to live, and this eternitas in general cannot be touched by any earthly powers. Unquote. This is quoted in Marvin Farber's Edmund Husserl and the Aims of Phenomenology. Though it is not well known, this stands among my favorite philosophical quotes, and I have often meant to write about this in detail, though I have not yet found my powers equal to the task. But this I will say. So, too, with the underground man. The underground man not only must exist in Dostoevsky's sense, but he also proves subspicie eterne his right to exist in Husserl's sense. 
no more than the earthly powers can touch the eternitas of husserl's apollonian thought can earthly powers touch the eternitas of the underground man's perverse thinking thank you